Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Buckle Bomb. It is I, back in the host chair. Somewhat of the host. We're like all hosts, aren't we? We're all friends here. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly. <laughs> it is I, uh, now known as Danny O'Ryan, a.k.a. Primo, your resident star boy, followed by... Uh, hello, everyone. This is the everyone's favorite co-host. Uh, this week, <laughs> I am... Um, I didn't come up with a name. Man, we need to get a little uh, bit more prepared. I need to, I just show. need to come up with a list before him. Uh, my name's Felix Rogers, <laughs> by the way. But you can just call me Felix. Felix, but Our, Felix, but you can call me Felix Rogers. Oh, that's a good nickname, dude. Ooh. I rate that. Or Felix, don't call me Felix Rogers, but call me Felix because that's my name. Save that one for next week. Yeah, yeah. We'll work on it. I'll have a list next time. I'll be better prepared. Right. We also have the boy. Jay Amazing He's still in the, in the building. Yeah, if he keeps crawling in, guys. We can't get out of here. <laughs> we put a cat gate on. He found a way to get in. We put a dog gate on. Still got in. You just can't keep him out. It's really cold outside. They really motivate you to get back inside. We had huh? the Brinks guys here the other day trying to, like, you still figured out the code. Yeah, He's man. Still it's here. cold world nine got no blanket, so let me in. I'm buying a digital lock next time. But our guest, I'm very happy to have this man on. It is uh, a friend of mine, Ollie Summers, a.k.a. Uh, the Boy Kev. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, I see the audience. The most deserving <laughs> ever is just... Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is going to be a hard podcast for you because you were so nice and like so soft. Did, I'm, I'm wondering if the mic is even going to pick him up. Oh, no, yeah, uh, he's good. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but yeah. I'm, I'm all right at this stuff. Yeah, uh, Ollie Summers, a.k.a. Kev, you made your debut along with me uh, last show we had. Uh, how'd it feel, man? Oh, man, it was, it was really <laughs> cool. Uh, I was super nervous up until like... 20 minutes before it started probably <laughs> because like I didn't get to actively think about what was going on and yeah. everything kept changing. Like the plans for that match changed 10 times or something like I that. Did. I was there to watch all of it change. I remember asking you every time I asked you what was going on in your match, you're like, mm, I don't know. It changed again. We'll find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> that's just how wrestling goes. I found out that's how, just how wrestling goes. Like maybe not just here, but like everywhere, like everything changes on a dime. Mm-hmm. Um, but how'd you feel about your match? I thought it went fine. Uh, <laughs> after the match, I was like, I was selling everything. I was like grabbing my head. I walk into the back. And then as soon as I pass the curtain, I'm just like, man, <laughs> I messed up on this, this, and this. And then Manny comes over and he's like, hey, man, it looked kind of weak. <laughs> I was like, yeah. But then Ace came over and was like, oh, man, that was cool. We did the thing. Oh, did he, so I heard someone say this. And Luis was, or uh, Alberto was Alberto, like, yeah. oh, man, this was. Da, da, da. And so, like, <laughs> I started I started getting hyped there. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, now that it's all done and I'm, like, looking forward to the next stuff, it's just, it's really cool. It's what I've been looking forward to for math amount of months. <laughs> I mean, what an awesome group to share the ring with for your mm-hmm. first match. I mean, you have the two veterans in Manny and Ace, and then you get another friend, uh, Alberto. Yeah, it was Must it was super good. awesome. Whenever he found out, because uh, like I said, the plans changed yeah. eighty times. Uh, he was just like, "Oh my God, we're gonna we're gonna." <laughs> I'm going to be in your first match. That's awesome. That is the perfect representation <laughs> of Alberto. That's awesome. And that's, that just, dude is that's so his good. energy. I love him. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. He was so happy to be in the match. And then he watched you get the crap kicked out of you for about <laughs> nine minutes. I've heard, I've heard so many people say, yeah, so I was watching and I was just waiting. And I was like, okay, <laughs> now, now you're going to get something. And then you just got beat up some more. I yeah. I, that's what I was, that's what I was watching. Cause I was watching, you know, from the little timekeepers table and I was like, oh man, Kev's taking some, some heat right now. <laughs> Oh, okay. Here, he, he, right, here comes a hot tag. Oh no, Manny got him, and he got dropped in his head. All right, <laughs> more heat. Yeah, you got the crap beat out of you for a good while, and then Alberto came in, cleanup crew, and then you got the maybe the most special gift of all in that match—a beautiful, I say, beautiful sunset flip off the uh, off the ropes. How'd that feel? Getting that? Uh, it felt good. I I'd, I'd been practicing the sunset for a couple weeks, and it was like. On and off, good and bad sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I kept, like, at first I didn't know how far I was supposed to go, and so Greenback was uh, helping me out with it, and I kept landing on him, and Pops was like, I mean, Greenback can take it, but, like, <laughs> someone smaller than him, you're going to bust their yeah. stuff up. You can you can do it, Kevin. Get, Ollie. Guests can, guests can say bad words. <laughs> <laughs> yay, yay. Okay, uh, guys. <laughs> all right. But um, that we've got a guy for this. <laughs> when it actually when it actually happened, 
either I went a little early or Ace uh, was a little too upright. Uh, and I didn't notice that I did this until I saw the photos, but I guess I pushed him down a little bit <laughs> instinctively with the veteran instincts <laughs> of a first-time guy. All these uh, Pushed him down into place and got over, and it went pretty well. Yeah. I mean, in terms of her first match, I mean, it could have went uh, way worse. I did not actively hurt myself or anyone else. So <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, and you went over. And um, I won. Yeah, Defeat. some people don't get that same. Yeah, point. undefeated Ollie. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> yeah, some people get lucky. Undefeated Ollie. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the next Goldberg. <laughs> Gold hair. It, it matches. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about your hair. Are okay. you? Do you plan to change up your hair in the, the coming few weeks? Uh, I'm not sure. I've, I've tried to get, like, a little shag thing going on, but I can't figure out how to get the proper, like, bang, like, curtain bangs going on. Yeah. Uh, cause I haven't had to style my hair in forever. So I'm just doing the like side swept emo bangs right now. Yeah. But I don't know. I love messing with hair cause it's just, it's, is just hair. Yeah. So I like just messing with it and seeing what happens. I don't know how that works in a wrestling sense where I'm supposed to like have an identity yeah. and all that stuff, but I don't know. I'd like to go full blonde again, maybe. Yeah. It's fun. That'd be dope. Yeah. I was going to ask because I feel like hair can make or probably break some people For in sure. wrestling. Um, yeah. How does that hair kind of formulate? How does that mix into who is Ollie Summers? Can you describe to me who Ollie Summers is? Yeah. So Ollie Summers is just like a flower child, peace loving, which is awkward because he's a wrestler. And <laughs> hitting people. But it's like he's just got the spirit of competition. You know, the like yeah. old world of sport, like oh, we're having an athletic contest to see who's the better man. And Ollie is just like, I like that. And I'm going from Waco to come down here to have some fun and competition. And yeah. then when someone hits me a bunch, then I start getting mad and start hitting back. Because, <laughs> like, what else are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like Ollie Summers is a part of you turned up to what everyone would basically say, like, 11? How are you that in wrestling? Or it's actually, it's actually funny. Because uh, whenever we were doing the promo things uh, – and so I uploaded mine, and Jakarta was like, <laughs> "I remember this." Was like, "Yeah, it just sounds like you're being you. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta have your character have its own voice." And I'm like, "But I am just a laid back, <laughs> happy sounding person. What? I, I'll try." Yeah. But I think so. I think it's just like the the kind of fun, happy, optimistic energy trying to turn that up into, hey, here's kind of a, a character that fits that. Yeah, it with fits the, you. With the hippie thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like that. I mean, getting to know you more and more, uh, fun fact, I don't know if you want to dive into how we <laughs> know each other, but, um, yeah, for as long, maybe not that long, but for the time that I have known you, um, yeah, I can say Ollie Summers is a good part of you. It's a very nice, subtle, nice, just nice man. That's the only way I can really describe you. We were talking about that beforehand. But, uh, yeah, you're a very nice guy. Thank you. Pleasant, I'm pleasant gentleman. You are pleasant. And it's really weird to see you go into the wrestling ring sometimes and, like, you do show intensity when you start, like, chopping people down or throwing kicks or throwing punches or just throwing people in general. And I'm like, that is the complete opposite of what I see when I look at Ali, a.k.a. Kev. I think that's something I actually struggle with, too, and that's something that the coaches have talked to me about. Uh, a lot is intensity and yeah. making sure that I look like I'm trying to have a, a serious competition and win. Because, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, because it feels good, you know, yeah. when, you're, when you're doing the stuff, it's like, yeah, I'm doing it, and then you watch it back, and it's like you're in jello or something, <laughs> or you look like, uh, I, like you don't actually want to hit the guy. Yeah, um, it's a fine So line. I'm working on, I'm trying, that's the main thing I'm working on right now is just making sure that I... Am still the happy guy while still looking like I'm a serious wrestler. Yeah, I can say um, you've definitely because I've I've been here since you came in. I was in production when you first started training, mm -hmm. and I think I can say, and I think basically everyone here at the school can say, you've made like a very big change from when you first came. Uh, yeah, do you want to get into how you got here to AAPW? Take uh, as long as you want, man. Because I like yeah. your story. Um, so I've really liked wrestling from the time I started watching it, which was when I was twelve, mm -hmm. so like seventh grade. Um, and before that, I had I had WCW NWO Revenge on my sixty four, but that's like the only experience with wrestling I had before that. Yeah. Um, 
And I didn't even know anything about it. I was like, oh, this guy has a bat. I want to play as him. <laughs> not knowing he's Everyone's the... Everyone's like, first impression, Triple H. Not Sledgehammer. He's like the... Sting's like the best person ever <laughs> in wrestling. Uh, he's just the bat guy to you? Yeah. But so I started watching... I had Raw. Uh, I got Raw on my TV. So I started watching that because my parents were really obsessed with NCIS. And they would... After NCIS would end, Raw would start. And they'd always nice. turn away from it. Oh, and they'd yeah, like... Huh. They'd like, mm, none of that wrestling stuff, <laughs> which is what my mom sounds like. Um, <laughs> and Mama Summers. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. And so eventually when I got a TV in my own room, I started watching it on the on the down low. And anytime my mom would come in, I'd change it back to like Cartoon <laughs> Network or something. I'd literally have to sneaky watch wrestling, um, which sucked because yeah. uh, I was really into it. I thought it was real as well. So like, yep. I was just like super into. Oh my god, this is, this is so cool that these guys are beating each other up, and yeah. there's the Undertaker and. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then even after I kind of got smart about it and realized that it wasn't, uh, that it was, you know, a show. Yeah. Um, I was just like, I was a theater kid, and so I was like, uh, this is like super cool theater. Yeah, I love this even That's more so cool. now. <laughs> um, and then I got into the wrestling games because I had a PS3, and so I started on SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 nice. and played those games up until 2019 uh, <laughs> where I would like make my own character. Um, and I actually got in... There was a, like online league that uh, called FAM that would make their own shows with their own storylines and have people do their matches and they'd plan it all out and everything like that. And at the time they had like, and this was 2011. So like this am amount is pretty reasonable for them. They had like yeah. 6,000 subscribers, something like that. Which and I, is, yeah. Yeah. At the time at, that's a pretty like, it's a considerable that's amount, a good chunk. Yeah. And so they were the biggest in that community. And I got into that cause I had a lot of friends in that group. Uh, and so I got to like be involved with all that and get involved with the storyline and the, voice acting and all that kind of stuff and it just kind of really buffed up my enjoyment for the wrestling because i was just like this is cool i'm kind yeah. of like doing wrestling stuff uh and as it was going like as life was going on and i was in high school and they would always ask like oh what do you want to do after like for your <laughs> career and stuff yeah. like that I never had an answer, but like in the back of my mind, I always wanted to say wrestling. But yeah. at that time, I was like embarrassed about it because everyone's like, "Oh, the wrestling! It's so weird. Yeah, so fake." Um, but yeah, so after I graduated, I went to college because my mom made me. <laughs> um, Parents just don't understand. Yeah, and I enjoyed college, but like secretly, I was like, "Why am I not like?" pursuing this thing right now yeah uh and then in november of 2019 i fell off a skateboard and broke both my arms Oof. um <laughs> both of them both of them both i broke them. i broke both my wrist and my left arm and my elbow and my right arm sheesh uh, i think they were both technically the radius just different parts of it yeah um and i had to get surgery on my left and my right was in a sling and so God. after the surgery, both of my arms were just in slings. This, the left one was numb from a block in it. And I was just sitting on the couch watching Netflix and just like, if I heal up, I need to stop just like secretly wanting to do this thing and just actually like sign up for a school. Yeah. So I healed up. I finished college. I graduated last May. Not last May. Yeah, last May. And then uh, in July, I signed up for the school. Yes, I uh, saw you and a fellow wrestler that may be up and coming come in. I thought you guys were brothers at first. I think I've told you that before. <laughs> yeah. You guys have very similar. Two white guys. Two <laughs> well, now I sound bad. Um, yeah, I saw you guys. Same, apparently. <laughs> That's funny because I'm the only colored person in this room right now, technically. Right, hmm. Felix, what are you? Uh, wow, we just ask people like no, that. No, bro, now? I get that. I get that question all the time. I actually, want to know. it's like a, it's like a, it's like a seventy-five twenty-five split. Yeah, uh, white, white to white to Hispanic. Yeah, uh, I mean, my yeah, my your brother. my mom, my yeah, my mom's <laughs> blonde, blonde, blonde hair, green eyed from Minnesota and Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> a, my my biological father slash sperm donor slash what call him what you want. <laughs> Is allegedly a allegedly allegedly a a short stout half white half Mexican guy, 
And that's why I'm the only hobbit in my family. <laughs> yeah, and everyone else, everyone else in my family are these tall Aryan gods, and I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried to get them to sign up for the school? We could, put, we could like. Push I got them. my brother in. I got my younger brother into wrestling. That dude, that dude's a bigger Kenny Omega mark than I am, and he oh, doesn't. Lord. He doesn't watch. He's not into wrestling. As he says, he I, <laughs> he's wearing a Kenny Omega shirt. I, 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 I know it's. I know it's, I know it's a lot of the of the pot calling the <laughs> kettle black, but. <laughs> Um, I got. I actually got him in because he's like he like watch wrestling off and on again yeah. with me uh, as I was growing up because I was a big brother. So he was just like whatever. And uh, when I had moved back into my because uh, I'd moved into my grand my back into my grand or I moved into my grandma's house a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then my mom and my brother moved in after my parents split up and they sold the house and all that fun stuff. But uh, at the time I was rewatching Being the Elite. And so nice. my brother just came in to the back room one time, just watching me watch it. He sat down and it was, at, it was towards the beginning where when like Adam Cole was still on the show and stuff like that. <laughs> so he was just like, Bro, I, so I got him into being the elite, which then got him into AEW. And now he's a nice. like, whole wrestling fan too. Again. Does he want to, I, I know we're kind of veering off of all of you, know, but is he, is he wanting to train? Huh? I actually never asked him. He was pretty hyped when I told him that I was training, but he, he lives up in Angelo. So he uh, doesn't, you know, boo. but yeah, he's, uh, He's built basically like Kev, honestly. Ooh, maybe, 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 maybe a strapping young man. Maybe a little, sh- maybe, a, maybe a little shorter, but not by like an inch, maybe. But about that, it's good jeans to have. Well, he's got it. I mean, I've got him, but they're just you know inward. <laughs> <laughs> the heart's there, baby. That's all that matters. Yeah, it's fine. We're not here. To, we're not here to talk. <laughs> this isn't a therapy session. Right? <laughs> that's, that's what that's what Tuesday nights are for. Oh, jeez, anyway, Tuesday nights. Kev. <laughs> all right. Uh, anyways, God, dude, we're gonna end it on a Tuesday night. Um, back to Ali, AKA Kev. Um, yeah, I remember seeing you and a fellow classmate come in and I'll be honest, I've said this to you before, but I was like, this dude looks way too like alternative to be in wrestling, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. I looked at you and I was like, this dude looks like he would want to take me out for Boba and that's it. Like I could not see you being into wrestling. Okay. But yeah, but then you, didn't you train on your like visit here or something? Uh, I didn't, I didn't, well, technically I trained, I fell on the ground. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I signed up, uh, I signed up the day I did the tour cause I guess I didn't mention this. I, I am friends with, uh, what's his, Ethan Price's, uh, brother. Mm. Cause I knew him uh, from yeah. a, from a band like years yeah. and years ago. Uh, and so I kind of knew Ethan, Krusty, whatever, uh, <laughs> And hit him up like, hey, man, where'd you train? That kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, he told me about AAPW. And so I came here and did the tour. And, like, it could have been whatever, to be honest. I uh, was just like, yeah, I want to do this. So I am going to sign up. And, yeah. So I just signed up the day of uh, just for good times. Um, and they were setting up the ring that day, so I didn't get oh, I to do, that. like, actual in-ring training, yeah. but we got to run afterwards, and <laughs> the first thing we did was sprints, and I guess it had rained or something, so we were running outside, <laughs> and it was all, like, gravelly and stuff, and I yeah. still had, I forgot to take my phone and my wallet out of my <laughs> pants, and so my wallet started slipping, uh, and so I tried to grab it, and I guess that misbalanced me, <sighs> and so the first impression everyone got of me was falling like <laughs> face down onto the gravel, scraping everything. You, yeah, didn't you? You came back up and you were your arms are scraped, weren't they? Just my hand. Your hand. Uh, I remember that. My hand was super scraped up. It was like a little bloody. And then when I found, I found out later that my like uh, leg area and like butt area were also a little <sighs> scraped up. Um, and then we got, started doing like uh, after the, we finished all the running and stuff, we did like. Uh, submission holds and I was with Greenback and he was just like do you want to like cover your hand or something as I was trying to like put a sleeper on him or something I was like you know what that's a great idea good lord I mean you can only go up from that experience right yeah <laughs> you've definitely gone up uh just to be I make it sappy almost every single episode Kevin you have come a very long way and I'm very happy to have known you for this long and to see you finally debut on a show cuz yeah, you've made a bunch of improvements, and your body's made improvements, too. Yeah. yeah. I used to be <laughs> – Pops likes to give me stuff for this, but, like, I used to be pretty – not, like, buff, but, like, a little built out when I was working out super consistently during yeah. college for, like, a semester and a half. Um, but 
then I just kind of let it all go. And I think because of that, my body's kind of like ready at a moment's notice to get back into like shape. Yeah. Which is, I'm grateful That's for That's really it, cool. I wish I had that. Like, yeah, it's, I think I just kind of plateau. And so it's kind of hard to push past that once I get back to that point. It is hard. But I don't know. I'm working on it. Um, I'm also a vegetarian. Yeah, I was so, going to ask you about that if you want to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, How does that affect you in your training? I don't think it affects my training so much uh, as far as that goes, but I do sometimes have trouble getting in uh, all the protein and all the calories and everything that I kind of need to keep on bulking up mm -hmm. because most of the stuff I want or the stuff I have at home, I need to cook. And if I wake up late or I'm busy Oof. that day um, or whatever else is going on, I can't just be like, okay, well, I'll just go buy a hamburger. Yeah. I have to go to specific places that carry the specific veggie food that specifically has protein in it yeah. that I can make God, up dude. for it. But generally speaking, I do pretty well at getting uh, a little over my body weight in protein. Yeah. And I try to shoot for like 25 to 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day type deal just to try to get on that i'd probably be a lot more discouraged if there weren't people like pete dunn trent seven and tyler Bate who mm -hmm. are just built and full vegan yeah i didn't even know they were full vegan but mm -hmm. then there's athletes like uh kyrie irving that dude switched to like full vegan really and he yeah that dude is probably one of the most like finesse point guards like of all time and then you have guys like um uh ufc fighter do you know what i'm talking about he was a uh, middleweight i believe so oh man he got into a big like I don't know a better word, kerfuffle <laughs> with, um, it's the best word. <laughs> I don't know. He was in the title picture and now he's full vegan and he's like loving his life right now. So yeah. Is it, is it correct term veganism? Uh, not for me. I'm, I'm just vegetarian. Just vegetarian. But, uh, so I still eat like eggs and I'm not opposed to like milk, but I, yeah. I drink, I drink almond and cashew milk cause it's got 10 uh, grams of protein. protein. Yeah. Protein's a big thing. You've actually, I'm stubborn. And I'm stupid sometimes, but you've actually tried to help me count calories too, which is really cool. Um, yeah, yeah. I didn't know, I didn't know that that was such a big thing, in like trying to gain weight or just gaining, getting whatever you want to get out of your body. Yeah, yeah you like hooked me up. You got to hook up on that. Yeah, I try to be not too strict about it right now because uh, my partner has experience with like eating disorder stuff, and so mm. they're uh, very tight on making sure that I'm not going too far on it and yeah. making it to where I develop that kind of thing, which is definitely possible and definitely scary. Mm -hmm. uh, so I try to keep a nice balance of, you know, trying to get the stuff I need to bulk while also not like making food the only thing I ever think about. Yeah. I think about food a lot. Luckily I, I have a very fast metabolism so I can eat like a crap ton. Mm -hmm. I, I think I've said this before, maybe on the podcast, but yeah. Every Sunday, baby, go to Little Caesars, get that uh, pepperoni pizza box all for myself. I'm good. I'm super good. But, um, yeah, um, we widen down here. We got to get the three count in, right? Um, yeah, we got about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. We, our three counts always take, like, 15 minutes anyways. <laughs> all right, so three count, baby. But yeah, uh, before we end, I just want to ask you, you know, this is – you just had your first debut. You had your first taste of an audience. Mm -hmm. You had your first taste of a wrestling match. Where do you see Ollie Summers in a year's time? Where would you like to see Ollie Summers? I would at least definitely like to see me, uh, if not out of the state, like super hard because Texas is a big state. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to see me just doing the Texas loop. Hopefully the COVID, the COVID stuff like gets fixed. Yeah. Everything goes back to some kind of normal and we can start – like encouraging yeah. going on loops and doing, uh, doing all that stuff regularly again. But I'd love to just be able to pursue this as like getting as much out of it as I possibly can going 100%. to as many shows and everything like that. Um, not, not in a year, but like the thing I've always wanted to do, like whenever I was like super getting into wrestling was like England mm -hmm. and like Europe and stuff like that. Um, cause I just love the, the kind of scene there and the kind of, uh, wrestling community, yeah. uh, hopefully, especially now that it's been, uh, kind of cleansed out with the speaking out movement. Mm -hmm. Um, hopefully it's a lot more safe for everyone. Yeah. Uh, but just in general, I kind of like that scene and that 
kind of crew. I could see it, man. Uh, the amount of improvements that you've made since you've been here and the short time that you've been here, I wouldn't put anything past you. I could see you doing basically anything, to be honest. As sappy as that is. Thanks, you know, dude. cry and hug. <laughs> So yeah, golden generation of AEPW right here, baby. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we got a lot of good, we have a good group coming up, to be honest. Bunch of tight-knit people. We're all friends here. We all love each other. We're all hoping for the best. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, yay, time for the three count. Our, we've been our, slacking people. Our only <laughs> actual segment in the show, and honestly. <laughs> uh, we've been slacking. Uh, I'm sorry to all of our loyal listener. Um, <laughs> Singular. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mom. Um yeah, three count. Basically, it was supposed to be only for three minutes. That was the uh, the concept of it when we first started. But now we don't care because what, Jay? We just work here? We just work here. Absolutely. All right. Uh, we're just going to throw a bunch of questions at them. Answer as fast as you want or as long as you want. We don't care. Once again, we just work here, <laughs> people. Uh, first question. I've been slacking on it. I want to ask, favorite ring attire, Rico? Momo Watanabe. Oh, you were ready. Yeah, I I've, I've, I've been ready for this. So she's, <laughs> a, she's a Joshi wrestler in stardom. Yeah. Uh, she's part of Queen's Quest, which is like this group that's like, we're kind of the most badass ladies in the world. And like when they're in tag matches and stuff, they don't help each other if someone's <laughs> taking heat. They're like, you got to survive on your own, my dude. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of gangster. Yeah. I don't like her attire now as much because Stardom got bought by Bushi Road, who owns New Japan. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, so they had to get pretty tame with everything? Not even tame. They just got, like, you know an anime when it, like, oh, no. they get their, like, their, like, final form and just gold everywhere and whatever. They oh. got they got some over-the-top attires now. Okay. Mm-hmm. But her attire before the the new ones, which is just, like, blue and black and white with the leopard print and i've never been like a fan of animal print or anything like that yeah but like queen's quest does the leopard print for all their stuff and they integrate it so like calmly and nicely and it's just very very nice nice and i just love momo i steal most of my stuff from momo <laughs> <laughs> not bad not bad Feel like she got anything uh oh yeah yeah, yeah. uh what yeah, what's your let me see what's your favorite uh pay-per-view Ooh, I was actually very not excited for this question because <laughs> I have a terrible memory with pay per views and everything like that. Um, so I can give like generic answers of like, oh, this is kind of a match that I liked, uh, like, or this is one that sticks out in my memory, which mm-hmm. would be like WrestleMania 30, where Daniel Bryan won. Ooh, that is that, that one's 30. That, is that, that the one? Okay, 30, yeah. yeah. My memory, my memory is really bad with this. I'm so jealous of the people that are like. Oh yeah, in nineteen seven, in 1997, uh, this pay per view <laughs> on this day, the, At card, the card was this up and down, and up it's and like in I order. can't, I can't, <laughs> honestly, I cannot do that. I no, but I wish. Uh, and it changes all the time. Like yeah. my my likes and my specific interests change all the time. Mm-hmm. But currently, I've been liking the the Daniel Bryan uh, comeback story and. Nice. Ooh, the Royal Rumble from last year where that Edge was came back. Just keep, just oh for yeah. just for Edge coming back. I've rewatched that Royal Rumble it's so many such times. It's a good that Rumble, like, yeah. the, like the Brock story, and then uh, Edge, Keith Lee and doing then, his thing, yeah. Drew coming. It's, it's, a good, oh. it's, a good, it's a good Rumble. It's a good. It's a good rumble. Rumble. I'm glad it happened right before the pandemic. Yeah. Before the pandemic, it would have right. been so different. Bro, Edge coming back to no crowd, I would have cried. Uh, MVP I, came back too, guys. <laughs> and he's been rocking and rolling. Yeah, yeah, man. Shout out to the Hurt Business. Hurt Business is like literally the only good thing Recruit about us. Rock. Literally the only good thing. Wait, Recruit what about Retribution? Retribution. Exactly. Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> T-Bar and Slapjack and Pancake and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, Felix, I'm glad that you asked that question because oh, uh, it kind of it kind of leaves me some room to ask, ask our boy here, Ollie, what are your views on WWE ECW? See, so, this, is, this is why we kick out it too because yeah. the third one's always. <laughs> I forgot to I forgot to mention this when I was talking about how I got into wrestling, but I didn't get SmackDown. And I did get Raw, and I also got WWE ECW on Sci Fi. And I thought it was And yeah. I really I really thought it was so cool because you had like Christian, who's a really good wrestler. You had William yeah, Regal. Yeah. Uh, they had good people, but Matt, man so finish. Cool. Matt Hardy was on there, I think. Uh, and I didn't real I didn't know what ECW the before ECW was, because I started watching wrestling in two thousand nine. Uh but I thought it was really cool, like Jay's at the time. Good time over here. And now I can look back on it and be like, "That was kind of trash." But Thank you. <laughs> it had at, us in the first half. At the time, it was amazing. 
God. That's true. In a, va- in a vacuum, I do remember watching WWCW like when it first came on and stuff like that and being like, you know what? Oh, how the turntables. I can get behind it. But now looking back on it, I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I was 11 or 12 years old at the time. I only, the only redeeming thing about the there w- we go. ECW is the fact that CM Punk was on there. Kofi Kingston came from there. And John I Morrison. was, John Morrison. I was I a big John fan. Morrison. I was a f- super freaking big fan of Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley. I still am. I think he deserves so much more. And he had a run with uh, the ECW brand for a little bit. Yeah, all of them were gone when I started watching it. Yeah, oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, so you, that was you like came, the dumps. You came in when they were like straight, like Christian, brands, William like, Regal. I love Christian, too. Ezekiel Jackson. Ezekiel Jackson Matt Hardy. was a champion. He was the last one. Yeah. yeah for like a minute. Kozlov. Kozlov. Oh, yeah. R.I.P. to the man. He's doing good right now. You see he's doing Instagram? amazing. Yeah, that dude looks like uh, a main character in GTA. Like, yeah, I feel like he's going to really sit me on so many main quests. He, but, uh, he has his own like vodka and wine company or he something does. like that now. And he has a sweet beard good and dope him. sunglasses. And he's like a stuntman, I think, as well. He, Look at that. He's been in movies and stuff like that, I believe. Is he really? Yeah. They're just too big to be stunning. What are you stunning for? Who are you stunning for right. if you're that who, big? Who are you pretending to be? A brick wall needs to fall over. Go, Kozlov. He's like, oh. He's Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly... That'd be kind of dope. He, I don't want to say things that are wrong, but I think he might have been in one of the John Wicks as like, because wasn't there? Oh yeah, there like, you. I think you. I think you're right. Mm. There was a WWE wrestler in uh, one of the John, the last John Wicks. Mm. But I might also just be completely wrong, so don't fact check me. The Great Khali. The Great Khali was in one of them. What? I'm pretty sure the Great Khali was in John Wick two or three. I would believe that more because I've seen Khali in a few movies. He was in The Longest Yard. <laughs> It was someone, it was one of the big men from WWE, WWE, they were fighting John Wick in a library. <laughs> huh. And I'm pretty sure it was the great Kali. Weird. Yeah, because I think he was like trying to do the whole head smashing thing to him. I he love it. Got out of it, yeah. Shout out to the great Kali. Nice head smash. But yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you, Kev, aka Ollie Summers. Uh, I can't wait to see what more you do in the ring. It was pretty cool to watch your uh, debut match. Yeah, it was cool that uh, somebody won theirs. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm just going to fall on my neck next time. Yeah. I'll come back. I'll bounce back, guys. Look, if there's one thing I know from double IWGP champion Kota Ibushi, land on your neck. Land on your neck, baby. And we'll end it on that. Thank you guys for yeah, listening. we'll end it there. Wait, hold <laughs> on. I have to, we, we got to do the plugs. Let me do the plugs. That's what I was, yeah. One thing. Okay, you're right. You can do it. You do plugs. it. I don't you want me to do, do the plugs. All right, it's You're going to do it. <clears throat> Make sure to join us uh, if you like uh, AAPW. Come watch us uh, in person. Our next show is this Saturday, January 30th. 30th. Uh, we got we got social distance seatings, temperature checks, the whole uh, nine and a half yards. Absolutely, uh, got some great matches. Uh, I hope I hope we ha- I hope people that debuted last last match are on the card. I would hope if so. not, uh, you know, one, one and done. We'll take it. We'll go. Nah. Uh, we have merch now too. AAPW official merch at like teespring.com. Get yourself a nice uh, some nice sweatpants, a nice a nice shirt. Get it get it. Get you a peg leg way. Uh, Papa Papa Don shirt. Uh, I think matches. the code. I think the code still works. Fifteen percent off. If you use Papa Don. Mm-hmm. Buy more stuff because if you buy more stuff, then Teespring lets us sell different stuff. So you can get like potentially con huevos on your water bottle. Yeah, like con huevos on your water bottle or AAPW gym bags or AAPW uh, blankets. I don't know. <laughs> whatever whatever Teespring gives us, we'll sell it. I don't. Care. We got we got to make money somehow. Um, hey, come join the school while we're at it. Yeah. We just have a, yeah, you can come join Felix in a class. I'm going to see his beautiful locks and his beautiful eyes and his beautiful face. Yeah, ho- yeah, you know, get in here, join us. I've seen a few people come through yeah, the doors. Yeah, we just got two new ones today, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. You know, we, you know, we're working with you. It's a good, good time, good fun, good, good coaches. I've had a very, yeah. very positive experience coming uh, so far, coming from someone who's a month in now. Yeah. So you learn a lot. It's fun. And as long as you're ready to learn and take some bumps and you're here for a good time you'll be good to go yeah and follow your dreams baby we'll end it on that whoa that was so sweet all right thank you guys see you next time peace peace peace